thank you very much for joining me, you guys. I really do appreciate this. My name is Swadik Mayanja. You guys can call me Q. Um, and on this channel, I bring you news, current events, and fun topics for nurses, healthcare providers, everywhere. Uh, we got the crazy lineup. A, a little bit of a roller coaster lineup of stories today, but we got the lineup for you today. So we're going to start out with some huge news, some good news for the people. For the people. Oklahoma takes down Johnson & Johnson. Um, we have two stories about some nursing homes. And then last but not least, we'll end on a real low note with a real racist, xenophobic, disgusting um, physician assistant. Stories for you today. Like I said, it's a roller coaster, but stick with me, okay? Let's always start with the good news. So good news, ladies and gentlemen. So Oklahoma wins a case, right? In a landmark decision, Oklahoma judge um, uh, today, on Monday, Oklahoma, and an Oklahoma judge um, on Monday ordered pharmaceutical giant company Johnson & Johnson to pay $572 million for its role in the state's Op um, opioid crisis. This is huge, you guys. This is amazing because this is the first of hopefully many, right? This is the first of hopefully many because this is shows that the people's voice matters. And I, it, it sucks that it, it, it took this long for this to happen, but it's, I think it's a great place to start. And I know $572 million sounds like a lot of money, but I promise you, in the grand scheme of things, it's absolute pennies. And the reason I say it's pennies is because um, the, the original ask, so the state of Oklahoma implored the judge to deliver a record $17.2 billion, yes, billion with a B, um, verdict against Johnson & Johnson for flooding the state with opioids. It said that the drug company created a crisis that killed more than 6,000 Oklahomans. So, like I said, the 572 million is huge, is a good thing, um, that it's, they're getting something and that they won the, the, the original case, but from a $17.2 billion ask to $572 million um, award, a settlement, uh, not settlement, um, uh, agreement, uh, or judge, uh, the judge saying that's how much you're gonna have to pay, that's a huge cut. And uh, on top of the fact that it's that little, I just want to let you guys know what the revenue of Johnson & Johnson was in 2018. So in just a single year, Johnson & Johnson, their revenue was $81.58 billion. Yes, $81.58 billion is what Johnson & Johnson made in 2018, and they just uh, uh, lost the lawsuit of $572 million. But don't think for one second Johnson & Johnson even wants to lose pennies pennies when it comes to the amount of money that they just made. Um, following the ruling, Johnson & Johnson announced that it plans to appeal the flawed judgment. Um, they continued by saying that they did not cause the opioid crisis in Oklahoma and neither the facts nor the law support this outcome. Michael Ullman, or Ullman, Executive Vice President and General Counsel for Johnson & Johnson said in a written statement um, today. Look, um, so that is the, the verdict, that is the current situation. But I'm really, really happy that this is happening because there's many more states, there's many more cities that are going to be taking Johnson & Johnson and other pharmaceutical companies to court for this exact reason. And um, for those of you who might not be caught up with how much this is affecting um, us as a people, I know you hear opioid crisis, the epidemic, all of this thing, but let me give you a couple of numbers just to remind you how bad this is and why it's important that we do um, uh, uh, at least put the blame, uh, hold these pharmaceutical companies accountable, right? So it is estimated, and this is coming from the CDC, it is estimated that every single day more than 130 people in the United States die after overdosing on opioids. Um, opioid overdoses accounted for more than 70 thousand deaths 70,000 deaths in 2017 let me take my glasses off um and then um according to no let me put my glasses back on i gotta read right i gotta read um so according to the u.s centers um for disease control and prevention from 1999 to 2017 more than 702,000 people have died um from a drug overdose this is from 1999 to 2017 702,000 individuals have died from a drug overdose. If they aren't accountable, who goddamn is, 
right? Who is if they aren't, right? You have to understand that these drug companies, not only do they make these drugs and push these, I mean, not only do they make these drugs, they make these drugs, but they're also the distributors. They push these drugs every single day. They're telling these doctors, you get paid extra, you get a bonus if you um, use these drugs because they know that these drugs are addicting. They know that these patients are gonna want more of these. That's how they're gonna make their money. All they care about is that bottom dollar. That's why they are a pharmaceutical company. All they do is make pills or make medication to get money out of it. It's crazy. I'm happy this is happening. Um, and it is hopefully going to start a cascade effect. More cities, more states, more... Every pe whoever, wherever they think it's necessary to put these um, pharmaceutical companies on trial, I think it needs to happen. And Oklahoma, good for you. It's a great start. I'm sorry that you didn't um, get the amount that you wanted. But I think this is an amazing start. And the more cities, the more states that do it, these pharmaceutical companies, I hope, I hope, I don't have too much hope, but I hope that they start to learn their lesson, right? Because it's absolutely crazy. Absolutely c -c -c crazy. All right. So Florida, um, so let's talk about these nursing homes. So Florida nursing home employees surrender to face charges and deaths of patients during the hurricane. And it's not during the hurricane, it, what happened after the hurricane, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so let me just tell you, get, let me set the, the mood, set the stage, right? So former uh, nursing home administrator, Jorge Carbello, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, and two nurses whose names were not, um, uh, who were not released, turned themselves in today. They worked at the nursing home where at least 12 patients, and this was in 2017, um, died during a power outage. And this power outage, like I said, happened after Hurricane Irma. So Hurricane Irma happened. It came, it took, it, it did its damage. And there was a power outage at this nursing facility. And due to the power outage, because there was no AC, many of these patients died of overheating, dehydration, so on and so forth, right? So administrators, before the storm happened, administrators were repeatedly told before the storm that they could call Governor Rick Scott's personal cell phone directly for help. Let me give you spoiler alert. They did call. They called five different times. And what did Governor Scott do? Zilch, nada, zero, nothing. Nothing. Not even an answer. Not Nothing. Nothing. Zero, nothing, right? Um, so it was pretty bad. Even though there was no answer, there was no help from the governor. Let me tell you um, uh, how bad uh, these 12... Pa a, a couple of examples of what happened to these 12 patients. So the fire lieutenant said that when she was called, because they were called for help, the fire lieutenant was called and um, one of the patients had a temperature as high as 107.5 degrees. She said that this is the highest that she's ever seen in her 12 year career, which is insane, which is ridiculous, right? So yeah, and then she continued to say that later that morning, after finding a patient that had 107.5 degrees, late, I'm a nurse, this is what I do for a living, right? I take these rectal temps on the reg. I've never seen 107. Forget about it. 100, holy Jesus and Lord, right? Um, but later that same morning, um, she said that another patient's temperature was so high that it could not be read on the therm uh, thermometer, right? It is insane. That is insane. I just don't know what the kind of situations, right? So obviously there's no AC. It's in Florida, muggy, hot Florida. So this is a horrible, horrendous situation. Um, and I, it's ho horrible for these patients. But the back to the core of the story. They're putting the blame on the administration there and the nurses. Why? I don't know. I don't understand, right? So the attorney, the attorney, attorney, the attorney that is um, protecting uh, the administration and the nurses that came forward um, said that uh, they sat there languishing, waiting for the cavalry to come and nothing ever happened. He continued on by saying, and this is what I feel like, right? Is the real truth of the story. What the, what, what you should be seeing. The real crime is that the state is looking to blame selfless caregivers and the evidence will show that no crime was committed. All the articles I read, all the research I've done for this specific story, this is where I'm leaning towards right now. Um, if there's something changes, I will make an update for this video. But as of right now, it looks like the healthcare providers and the administration in this building did all they can do to try to keep these patients safe, right? Um, and then um, because now these uh, the administration and these nurses came forward, um, 
they uh, went back to Governor Scott, who now uh, is in the Senate. He's no more a governor. He, he's in the Senate. Um, so Scott, who now serves in the U.S. Senate, said in a statement that the nursing home should have called 911. N continued on by saying, nothing can hide the fact that this healthcare facility failed to do their basic duty to protect life. Again, spoiler alert, they did call 911. They did. Not once, not twice, not... They called many, many times. Let me tell you. So the day of the outage, the day that the power outage went off, the facility, um, in the facility, they called 911 twice for two different patients, right? And the day after, this is the morning... It's not even the day after. The morning after, they called 911 six, six different times within three hours, six different times within three hours for six different patients. And Governor Scott says, I, hands are clean. After promising that they could call him for help, he didn't do anything to help to, um, evacuate the building. Um, and then after knowing everything that happened, the, there's 911 calls that you can hear people um, from the healthcare facility. If you just type in this, um, Google, YouTube, whatever, you can hear the 911 calls, every single one of them. It's, you can hear the dispatcher talk to these nurses and patients, uh, nurses and administration. They cared. They wanted to help these patients. What are they supposed to do? What they supposed to go downstairs and fix the AC? What are they supposed to do? I'm really confused because the reason I'm real hyped up about this story is because everywhere you go look at the story, the title is nurses uh, or um, um, uh, what's it called? Yeah, uh, nurses uh, charged with killing patients after murder. Like, like I mean, after patients' death from the um, from the storm. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. They did everything they can, could do, and they asked for all the help that they could ask for. If you've ever worked in a rehab or a nursing facility, um, uh, nursing home facility, you know that there's a level, there's just a ceiling to the acuity of care that you can take care, um, do for these patients. When these patients are overheating 107.5 degree temperatures and some temperatures that can't even be read because they're that high, there's nothing you can do. You call 911. You try to get them to a different hospital. And that's what they did multiple, multiple times on top of trying to get a hold of the um, the senator, I mean, the governor at the time, Rick Scott, to help them evacuate the building. But nothing was heard. And now the blame is being put on them. I, I think it's disgusting. And I hate the fact that when you look at the, the headlines for these stories, it's blaming the nurses. It's blaming the administration. They did everything they could. They did everything they could. It's really frustrating to see that. Um, um, it really bothered me quite a bit, to be honest. All right, some good news. Let's talk about some good news before we talk about the rest of the bad news of the week. Um, so this is for all the nurses who are going back to school. This made my heart sing. Man. Like, I, I love this story, right? So Kelly and Mark Bolis, or Bo Bolis, I'm not going to try to say that last name again, but Kelly and Mark, who are from the Broadway Heights in um, Illinois, I think. Is it Illinois? Wherever it is, um, Kelly and Mark, um, they are also the graduates of the 2019 graduates of Fortis College recently became registered nurses at the same time while juggling work and, excuse me, raising three children. Yes, these two people, not only are they, were they in nursing school together, they were a couple, so that means they had to work to keep a roof over their heads. But cherry on top of all of this. So all you nursing students out there, they are complaining that you don't have time to study, that you have too much on your plate. All of this BS. Understand that these two, a couple, did it together, graduated at the same time. Work, um, were were together. They were married. They were together on top of having to work, on top of having to take care of three children. This is what I call nursing goals, life goals. This is, you study together, you love together, you stay together. This is, I love this, I love this. Um, so when they asked Kelly, she said, nursing is the bond that keeps the family together. Um, and then uh, the couple, they are, so, and this, the, the goodies, all of the, the meat, it doesn't even, the, the story didn't start there. Their nursing careers didn't start there, right? The couple met in 2009. Guess where they met in, two, guess where they met in 2009. Yes, you guessed it. You guessed it. They were both attending Brown Mackey College for the um, their LPN. 
I love it. I, it just, it doesn't get any better than this. Ooh, who are you kidding? It doesn't get any better than this. Um, so they quickly got um bonded, you know, lovey-dovey, started flirting. Hey, hey, how you doing? They did a couple of, you know, clinical rotations together, got to know each other. Um, and then they started dating in 2012. They got married, had the children. And then today in 2019, um, they graduated from Fortis College at the same time, both with their RN degrees. Can we just clap it up for these two um, love uh, nursing lovebirds? This is, you know, that's 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 the goodness, the greatness I like to see in the nursing um, in the nursing world. I love it. I love it. Can't complain. Can't complain. <laughs> right, nursing goals. <clears throat> So back to some shitty news. All right. Um, and I see stories like this every single week. Nurse uses Snapchat um, videotaping a patient. Nurse uses Instagram videotaping. Nurse posts picture. I'm like, God, man, like some people just don't understand. Like I remember in nursing school. Let me tell you what happened before I go on my rants. All right. Okay. So. A Snapchat video from December 20, uh, 2019 incident allegedly shows Illinois nursing home workers harassing an elderly patient with a hospital with a hospital gown. The patient does not like hospital gowns. Um, and if you just say, oh my goodness, who? Well, why does the patient not like hospital? The patient had dementia, has dementia, right? Um, the, the patient does not like hospital gowns and the staff at the Abington of Glenview facility were reportedly aware of her evasion. Um, aversion, I'm sorry. Um, so, so I'm going to post a video for, uh, in the edited version of this. Um, but for those who, who can't, who are watching the live, first of all, thank you very much for watching this live video. I like doing these live videos. I think it's really, uh, it's, it, I feel like more connected, right? But for those watching the edited video, you'll see the video. Um, for those who are watching right now, um, let me just tell you what the video looks like, or you could just Google it um, as soon as we're done here. Um, so the nursing assistant, Brian Cortez, is accused of waving. He's like waving the gown in front of the patient, and then he keeps throwing it on the bed, and the patient like tries to throw it off, get it off the bed and all of that stuff. And his girlfriend, um, Jamie Montessa, filmed the incident. Um, and in the video, on the Snapchat video, the caption, to the video reads Margaret hates gowns with two laughing emojis. Ha <laughs> ha! Very funny. That's funny. Let's torture and like um taunt this patient that is confused, has dementia in the hospital, and their livelihood, their health is is based on your care. But you are gonna be over here trying to take advantage of that. You're a dick. You're an asshole. You shouldn't be in healthcare. You're just and like for those. So if. For those who are who have seen the video, or if you've seen the video in this edited version, um, what's it called? It, it's there's no physical abuse, right? There's no one pushing, harming, like physically touching. But you have to know all you healthcare providers out there, and I know every single one of you has taken care of a patient that has had dementia or is in the decline or is uh, something where uh, brain damage, something. Uh, we've all taken care of these patients, so. I know when you hear it, like the line, patient does not like um, um, hospital gowns, you might say, okay, who gives a shit, right? But no, in her head, in the patient's head, she's afraid of that gown. And you can tell in the video how scared or how much she dislikes those hospital gowns. And it's hard to watch when you understand what it... When you've been in those situations, when you've taken care of a patient that is afraid of something in the room, afraid, you know at the core of who you are, that patient isn't kidding, isn't laughing, isn't joking around. They are actually afraid of it. And that's what the, where the dementia comes in, right? If you're a healthcare um, provider, if you're in uh, nursing, nursing aid, whatever, if you are giving care to someone and they are, uh, you are responsible for them, I don't understand why you want to take advantage of that. I don't understand why you're going to make your day, their day, everyone else's day a little bit more difficult so you can get a few giggles. And on top of all of that, you're going to embarrass that patient, that patient's family and post it on your Snapchat. Get the fuck out of here, please. And thank you, please. And thank you. It hurts. It just, it hurts to watch. I, I, it, it bothers me, all right? And I know for the, mo for the vast majority of you guys out there, it bothers you too because the vast majority of nurses, healthcare providers, good human beings. But those, those dumb... Ah! All right, you know how I feel. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on, okay? Final story of the day. 
Um, and I wish I could end on a good note, but uh, nope, not in 2019. Not in 2019. A racist PA, physician assistant, real racist. And I don't want to just say racist because there's a lot more than just racist, right? He's racist, xenophobic, sexist. Every ist, ism, whatever you want to put, this dude went hacking, just hacking away at it. He just hates everybody and everyone that doesn't look exactly like him, okay? Um, so this video went viral of a physician, of, uh, a Houston physician assistant, his name is Simon, confessing um, in a deposition to all of these text messages that was sent to, I think, his employer um, anonymously, right? So yes, like I said, um, it, the text messages were sent anonymously, um, and now he's in court and he's in a deposition, and he's um, uh, and, and the lawyers asking him all these questions about it, and that's how this video went viral. Um, again, for those who are watching this live, thank you so much for watching it live. I'm going to give you many examples of what he said. It, I mean, it's hard. It's you know how do you have those like uh, uh you know video violence sexual content? Yeah, there's gonna be some like some real mature language moving on here. He this homeboy he doesn't like blacks, Hispanics, Jew, the whole nine. So if there's any words that make you feel some type of way, just bounce now. But for all of those who are watching the edited vision version, <clears throat> I'll show you the video and I'll show you the pictures of the things he posted and said. Um, just a horrible human being, and to think. To think that these are the nurse, these are the healthcare providers you work with every single day. You walk by them, you take orders from them, you do, you do, you do bed care with them, and they thinking and sending these text messages. Let me tell you the detail. Look, I'm, I always, I always do this. I'm sorry. Let's get to the text messages. <clears throat> so let's go down this list. Horrible stuff. Horrible, horrible stuff. Starting with the worst of the worst. I'm kidding. Uh, it gets worse. It gets worse. Right? I don't know. It depends who you are. Um, so he was quoted, one of the text messages just said, Whitey, the advantages of being a white man can never be matched. All hail Whitey. G good, f good for you. G that's, that's the beginning, ladies. That's where we starting, ladies and gentlemen. Continues. Fat Jewish women with cancer are my Memorial City specialty. That's a specialty, right? He continues in that same text messages, in that same text message, Fat black girls are too. I, I guess he's spreading the love. He's, I mean, he's spreading the hate. He not only does he not like fat Jews, he like fat Jewish women. He also doesn't like flat, fat black ladies, right? Continues on by saying, and I guess he's talking about someone he works with. This is a real specific text message. But he says, did you cut a check for nigger Chris Smith? Yeah, he says the N-word. It's out there blatant. He don't care. I don't know who he's texting. But throughout this whole thing, um, the lawyer keeps asking him questions like, do you remember saying this? Do you remember saying this? And he keeps using that same old Donald Trump line. Yeah, it's dirty locker room talk. It's boys in the locker room talk. Am I saying anything incorrect about reading from these statements? A lot of inappropriate locker room talk that I'm not proud of. Can we just pause and talk about this locker room talk? What fucking locker room guy, man? Seriously, I've been in many locker rooms in my day, right? I played all three sports in high school. I do CrossFit. I go to the gym regularly. I mean, I, 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 every, like every kind of gym, locker room, whatever situation I've been in, fo the football field, every kind of situation I've been in, I don't hear this shit. Where are your locker rooms, right? Where are these locker rooms? Maybe I wouldn't be invited. Uh, probably, according to this, the color of wool. But I don't know if I'd be invited, but I've yet to see those kind of locker rooms. Yes, guys get, you know, they get all hyped up and testosterone and want, you want to just outdo the other guy, even if you guys are talking shit. But these are actual text messages through, like, very, like just forever, forever, right? Um, and, and before I continue with these examples, so I have like a couple of different ch um, message chat, um, well, like, well, like chat group, not chat groups, what are, like message groups, right? With nurses, and then I have some of some of my friends, and we usually share memes and say like I would say some fucked up things here and there, but like there's no hate. Right? It's just fucked up funny things. Like the same memes you see on Insta. Right? I just don't understand this. I don't understand this. But there's more, believe it or not. There is indeed more. He says, golf and baseball are rich white man's sport and poor Latino sport. Oh, okay. I guess the Latinos can join. But hoops, but, but hoops are for niggers and for white guys that don't have good hand-eye coordination. 
Really, though? I mean, just... I mean, sure, you the racism, the disgusting, all of that stuff aside, you're going to really tell me that basketball players don't have hand-eye coordination? I will put any basketball player over any golfer in the history of either sport. Like, really? Really? You gonna tell me that baseball players and golfers are more athletic than hoopers, than basketball players? I, I'm not gonna say nothing, but I'm not gonna... All right, all right, right? Continues on by saying, white niggas are taking care of business tonight. Continues by saying, um, and then the, he has a picture of spray paint on the wall, and the lawyer is asking, did you spray paint this on the wall? Again, for if you're watching the edited version, you'll get to see this up there. But it says... And legitimately says, drop your suit again, Anthony, nigga lover 88. And I guess 88 has something to do with the Nazi stuff, right? Because they also have on that um, a bunch of uh, swastikas spray painted on the wall, right? Um, uh, and then last, the last one I'm going to give you an example. They keep going off. It's a 15-minute video. It's a 15-minute video of him talking about all these bad things that they say. Um, he says... Um, continues one of the things that hit me hard as a healthcare provider he says i'd like to be in the boat right now but i'm here in the er taking care of mexicans and niggers <sighs> well hopefully you are actually taking care of them right um so the thing is like i i, I just wanted to end this just with like it's it's hard for me to understand if you hate so many different groups of people, right? Like if you have that just natural hatred in your heart, why go into a caregiving type of profession, right? Like if, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, it's just, I don't know. It's because you have to know what you're getting yourself into, right? If you're a physician assistant, if you're a PA, you're smart enough to know what to expect when you become a PA. And when you become a PA, when you become a healthcare provider, you are in a hospital, you are in a healthcare facility taking care of anyone and everyone that walks through the door. You don't get to choose and pick your clients, right? So it, it really, it, it's hard for me to understand. And maybe I'm biased because I work in healthcare, but it's hard for me to understand any healthcare provider that seriously dislikes other races, sexes, whatever, and want to be in healthcare. I it confuses me, right? I I don't want to say I can understand it, but I can understand if a business executive or if someone that has a private, like I don't know, pop mom and pop store that doesn't want to bake a cake for like like that kind of stuff. I'm like, I I, I guess like you might have your personal, but if you go into healthcare, you know what you're getting yourself into. And what you're getting yourself into is helping and taking care of anyone and everyone that comes through the door. Um, I really do think he, he should not be allowed to be a physician assistant with all of these absolute disgusting like, and it's not like unconscious biases, these weird feelings he has towards other races. Like he actually dislikes and hates other races, groups of people. If you have that kind of hatred, I can't trust that you as a healthcare provider are going to be giving the same kind of care to the white guy that comes in that looks exactly like you to the fat black lady or the Jewish mom or whoever that you just decide you're not a fan of, right? So I can't trust that. I think he needs to lose his license. I think he should not be him and his friend group because a big part of that 15 minute video is them trying to find out who else from the um because i think there's a doctor that he's friends with in the in the snapchat in the snapchat in the group chat like there's a few people that are in the group chat people that he is actually texting these messages to and they are sending messages back to him in the same context type thing um in the same kind of disgusting uh what's it called language uh, they trying to figure out do they also work in these healthcare facilities and um, it sucks like him and everyone in that text message groups needs to get out like you need to bounce you need to bounce you shouldn't be in healthcare if you if you hate certain people get out you need to go no thank you thank you but no thank you um, so that's it for today I know uh, a little rocky I'm sorry that I had to leave here but everyone that did watch this whole way thank you so much I really do appreciate you um, please don't forget there's going to always be a link in the description box um, to my uh, podcast please go like um, review it give me them five stars I need them five stars and then just leave a little comment letting me what you like what you don't like all of the above please please and thank you